Hey everybody, Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics and this is the CZ USA Bren 2. The Bren 2 is the latest iteration of the Bren rifle from CZ slash CZ USA. And it is a departure from previous Bren, the 805, and the fact that it was designed from the ground up as opposed to being built specifically for some contract needs for, for military contracts for CZ. Uh, it is a short stroke piston rifle. Uh, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a little ambivalent when it comes to short stroke rifles. Uh, I generally prefer long stroke piston if we're going to put it in this. However, that's more, I guess, germane to uh, AR platforms. AR platform arguably is already a piston gun, when it's direct impingement, it's just a different type of piston. Uh, but generally when you start adding piston systems to that particular platform, you can have some problems. My very first piston gun had very bad carrier tilt problems. It was an AR platform. So getting away from the AR platform with a piston system, I was curious to see if a ground up piston gun, short stroke or long stroke, in this case short stroke, was going to change my mind. Particular firearm I got for the review was the Bren 2 11 inch pistol, which I converted to an SBR uh, using an, a 922 compliance kit from CZ, which gives me the OEM stock and some other interesting parts. It does have an MLOC rail system and it is gas adjustable, which is a good thing for piston guns to be because if you want to tune it for a particular caliber, or I'm not sorry, caliber, a particular round, particular grain weight, if you will, or you want to soften it out when you put a suppressor on it, it's nice to be able to do that. And that's one of the advantages that piston systems have always had is they're a little bit less finicky when it comes to adjusting the gas. And because the Bren 2 was built from the ground up as opposed to taking a different design and putting piston system into it, uh, you have a little bit more fine control over the final product and make sure it's gonna be reliable. So we don't have to mess with adjustable carriers or adjustable gas blocks. Not that there's anything wrong with those, but they can be finicky from gun to gun to gun to gun. Normally, I would be a little hesitant about a fiber reinforced polymer lower receiver just because coming from most rifles, everything is either steel or aluminum, all steel, all aluminum, or some combination thereof. However, there's plenty of firearms out there that have polymers or fiber reinforced polymer lower receivers that function just fine. One thing that immediately appealed to me about the Bren was the fact that the controls are very ergonomic and it's not much of a departure from an AR. Just because you're not trying to build another AR platform doesn't mean you can't take some cues from it and put your controls in the proper places and I think they definitely did that on the brand. It has an ambi safety which I'm generally not a huge fan of, however this one is very recessed, it's out of the way, it doesn't interfere with either uh, shooting finger or support thumb or whatever combination depending on the hand you're using. If I'm sweeping from the outside versus sweeping traditionally with the thumb, it doesn't interact with my trigger finger when I do that, which I think maybe they learned their lesson on the CZ Scorpion with that because the Bren 2 definitely doesn't have that issue. And you have a lot of ergonomic options in there. Now you do have ambi controls, ambi magazine release, which some people prefer, especially left-handed shooters buying a right hand eject rifle. Uh, there there also is an ambi bolt lock and an ambi bolt release, which you'll notice is right there inside the trigger guard. I don't really care for that for obvious reasons. I don't see any problem with it, I guess, on the uh, academics of it, if you will, but I think in execution, that's not necessarily a place I want to put a control surface. Locking the bolt to the rear, locking the bolt to the rear. Releasing the bolt, releasing the bolt. But it's all right there inside the trigger guard, which I didn't necessarily care for, and it wasn't something I was gonna use because my life is not made that much easier by having that option there and be in this, in, inside the trigger guard because I shouldn't be sticking my finger inside the trigger guard unless I'm gonna put it on the trigger and I'm about to shoot the gun. So that was something that I, a little confused, but they got the spirit kind of thing. Uh, I don't mind it being there, but I'm not gonna use it. Non-reciprocating charging handle, which I think is huge. If you're gonna have a side charger or a charging handle anywhere on the firearm, I think we've come far enough in technology that we can have it be non-reciprocating for obvious reasons. Reciprocating charging handles can sometimes interact 
adversely with your support hand or your equipment or your sling or something like that. It's not something I really want to do. And of course, the charging handle does act as a forward assist in the event that it doesn't go fully into battery. Again, not something I'm gonna mess with. If my gun doesn't go fully into battery for some reason, I'd like to know why before I started mindlessly hitting something trying to get it to go into battery. That's just personal preference. Folding stock, because it's a because it is a short stroke piston system, we're not relying on a buffer tube system like we get with the AR platform. I can still fire it from the folded position if I had to. But the main thing for folding stocks is it just makes the gun very, very storable. A word on the stock, really, I do like it a lot. It's rapidly adjustable. I don't have to really mess with anything. Uh, one thing that we generally see when we get away from being married to a buffer tube, a linear buffer tube that's usually the same or very close to the same height as the, the top rail, is optic mount heights have to be in according with that. We can't go too low because our cheek weld is going to put our head right in line with the monolithic rail on the top. There is a cheek riser built into this stock and I was able to use a traditional, I went with a 1.5. For the Steiner T5XI, I went for the review process. I didn't feel like I had to mess with the optic height too much because they were departing from uh, traditional stock, if you will, to where that cheek riser is gonna be directly in line. Uh, so you do have a little bit of room to play with here based on your length of pull. Uh, and the optic that you put on it going with a magnified optic of course eye relief is going to be a bigger concern versus a red dot uh, but i didn't really it wasn't something i really noticed getting away from an ar platform where i had to mess with optic height versus where i placed my cheek weld on the rifle stock itself another cool feature that i liked is the fact that uh, the stock locks into the shell deflector uh, it just folds in and it considers the storage so you don't have it flapping around and also you don't have to hit a button to release it which is usually uh, a direction that some other designs have gone the stock will lock in but i've got to hit a button to unfold it this one i just pull down a little bit it unfolds and then i can make my adjustments as so which I think is a pretty slick, pretty simplistic design. Now this is the OEM stock uh, from CZ, part of that 922R kit. However, there are other aftermarket stock options out there if you didn't prefer this one. Pistol braces are also available for people who don't want to go the NFA route. Getting right into the review process. As you guys know, my 2000 round standard review process, the very first thing I'm gonna do once I've got the gun zeroed or the accessory mounted or whatever I happen to be reviewing is a 500 round burn down, which is 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if that accelerated rate of fire will show me issues with the firearm that shooting 500 rounds over a longer period of time wouldn't. It is on uh, the border of unrealistic, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway. So without further delay, here's your 500 round burn down. Five hundred rounds without issue, and I really got a feel for the trigger while I was doing that. Uh, gun got hot, receiver got hot. I didn't have any play issues or any kind of heating issues in between the aluminum receiver and the fiber reinforced polymer lower receiver. So uh, even though I wasn't too worried about that, definitely peace of mind that I didn't actually have any problems develop. The trigger is, well, I don't like it. Uh, it's not a trigger I can't use, I just feel like there's a whole lot of pre-travel before I hit a wall, before I get a break, and a whole lot of return. So it's a very long trigger pull. Analogous to a uh, low trigger weight staple gun. It's not an unusable trigger, and for precision shooting, for actually laying it on the gun and trying to shoot out to like 100, 200, 250 yards, being precise, trigger isn't so bad in, in that regard, although there is a whole lot of pre-travel. It's just not something that if given the choice, and I do have the choice after the review process, uh, that I would keep. I think it's a perfectly functional trigger. Uh, there's nothing ne absolutely 100% negative about it. Just for my personal preference, I don't like the amount of travel overall in the trigger. The weight itself isn't bad, but it does, again, remind me of that CZ Scorpion trigger in a couple of ways, and I don't really know what the trigger is trying to be. Uh, so an upgrade to the trigger system is definitely coming after the review process. 
So after the burn down, I just use the Bren 2 during my normal practice. Anytime I go to the range doing something rifle specific, the Bren 2 is what I was going to use until I met that 2000 round uh, for the video purposes. Uh, the ammunition I was using was mostly 55 grain. I did zero it on 77 grain Atlanta Arms uh, TMK, which is a very accurate round. In fact, I've gone to that for accuracy testing over the Black Hills 77 grain because it does just seem to be a consistently more accurate round. But I shot a lot of 55 grain PMC. Uh, in fact, mostly 55 grain PMC and then some of that 77 grain. I did try, I did put a couple mags of duty uh, ammunition through it. My normal self-defense ammo, which is 70, 75 grain gold dot, cycled fine. Gas adjustments are pretty intuitive. I ran the Bren 2 suppressed because I shoot suppressed, especially with SBRs, almost exclusively. The only time you usually see me shooting an SBR without a suppressor on it is for video purposes. Uh, any other time, I'm going to have a can on there. And I use two different suppressors on the Bren 2 just to see if two different approaches to suppressor technology would cause any issues with the Bren 2. I used an OSS Helix Ti and also used a Surefire SOCOM 2. Uh, neither suppressor created issues with the piston system. In fact, it was able to run it uh, wide open and then gas adjusted specifically for um, shooting suppressed. Recoil pulse uh, on any gas setting is very manageable. It, the gun does have quite a bit of bark to it though. I don't know if it's necessarily because it's an 11 inch barrel because I've got other 11 inch guns that don't really announce themselves in such a bright and muzzle flashy way. Uh, easily tamed with a muzzle device, uh, although I did have an OSS flash hider on it and it was still not flat hiding flash very well. And I know for a fact that that particular muzzle device does a really good job, usually, of suppressing muzzle flash. No big deal, because like I said, outside of video purposes, uh, review purposes anyway, I'm probably going to put a suppressor on it. Uh, but that was just something that I noticed. The 11 inch barrel is interesting to me mainly because it seems to be a pencil profile. It's not a traditional quote-unquote government profile like I'm used to coming from the AR platform in 5.56223. And that did give me concerns because I was wondering if, as the gun heated up, if accuracy was going to be affected. Well, first, how accurate is the gun? Uh, so just a really quick accuracy test. This was after my zero confirmation. This is a five-round group at 100 yards shooting 77 grain Atlanta Arms TMK. For an off-the-rack rifle, I'm very happy with that accuracy. Never worried about accuracy out of a thinner profile or quote-unquote pencil profile barrel, uh, especially when the gun it hasn't really gotten warm. But I was concerned, like I said, kind of getting into this, uh, is the rifle going to suffer as the gun heats up? And in 2000 round review process, which you know, I usually do as quickly as I can just to, just to move through it and to kind of hard use the firearm, I was worried that as the gun got hot, I was going to start to lose accuracy. Although I am happy to report, I didn't notice a significant loss in accuracy, and I wasn't just shooting this thing at 10 yards on paper. Uh, I did reach out quite a few times during those 2,000 rounds shooting the 77 grain to give an overall idea of how the gun held up and how the accuracy held up as the rifle got hotter. And I'm happy to report that I didn't notice any issues with it. So the accuracy that we get from our accuracy test, it maintained more or less uh, throughout the review process. I already talked about one thing I don't like, which is the trigger. Not a big fan. The next thing I'm not a fan of, and this seems to be a plague on rifles that are Eurocentric, is the rail. I don't, do Europeans have smaller or shorter arms than us, or do they just not use accessories like we do? I'm really confused as to why a lot of European rifles, but in this case we're talking specifically about the Bren 2, has such a short rail interface. I want rail to protect my barrel, especially with a pencil profile. You know, think about in, in a rush, I might come in and inadvertently blur, brace the barrel off of a barricade versus a rail to take a longer shot using cover or something like that. That's going to cause some significant accuracy issues. I can make the gas system longer to interface with the longer rail, so I could bring my rail all the way up and I wouldn't have an issue at all. Now the 922R rail is better than the rail that originally came on this in its pistol configuration. Uh, but the rail is still, well, I just hate it because it doesn't really 
fill out. It doesn't embrace what it could be. It could be a much longer rail, relatively speaking, to give me more overall options for accessory mounting. Right now, I've just got a white light mounted on it, which most shooters, that's what you're going to have. The night vision category is smaller, but if I wanted to run a night vision laser device on this and all the nonsense that sometimes goes with it, uh, and I wanted to run a white light because you should never take the white light off the firearm because you're probably more likely to use that than you are the night vision device. Uh, mission specific, of course, for those who are just, you know, uh, looking at this for maybe law enforcement purposes. I seriously doubt the military is going to be looking at it. Uh, where would I put it? Because I got my little flashlight pressure pad up here. And if I run it here, that's problematic. So I'm trying to figure out where I would put my laser device if I was going to run one on here. And the answer is there's not a whole lot of options here. I would have to come up with a unique configuration in order to get everything I wanted out of this rifle, or I'd have to put my weapon light in a very less than optimal place, which I don't prefer. Or I'd have to get an aftermarket rail, which is exactly what I'm going to do uh, after the after basically after filming this video. Trigger's getting changed out, rail's getting changed out. Uh, I just don't get it. Why? Come on, guys. CZ USA, if you do happen to see this video, can you maybe give a call over there and be like, hey guys, longer rails, just just because more options is good. And you can probably charge the same amount of money. Uh, maybe, you know, I'd pay 15 bucks more for additional material for a rail length. Uh, I'd be cool with that. Overall thoughts on the Bren 2? I think it's an awesome rifle. I'm glad to have my mind changed about short stroke piston systems. And it took a non-AR short stroke piston to do it. This is something I'm definitely going to keep. It's definitely something I'm going to use. I do have to make some changes to it, which is unfortunate. I, I would prefer if it, everything OEM from the factory, I would just make this is the greatest thing ever for this particular category of firearm or whatever, and I wouldn't have to change anything. But in this case, the trigger's got to go, need a longer rail. But other than that, I've been very happy with the Bren 2, and it's definitely something I'm going to be keep. I'm going to keep and I'm going to be using. I'd be interested to see what the overall barrel life is going to be uh, with the frequency of rounds that I shoot and that that sm that thinner profile, almost pencil profile barrel. It'd be interested to see how that holds up. Now, that being said, everything's been going good so far, and I've been very happy with the performance. But again, this is only 2,000 rounds, and although 2,000 rounds, especially these days here in 2020 in Ammunition Panic 3, uh, 2,000 rounds is, it hurts a little bit. Uh, I've been buying more ammo than I needed to for years in order to prepare myself for situations like this. So I'm not hurting yet. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully by the time uh, I do start to run out of ammo, um, people have gotten their heads about them and were able to purchase rounds again. But if you're curious about the Bren 2 and you're thinking, hey, is it really substantially worth it? I think it's a great firearm. I can't say it's dramatically better than some of the other guns that are out there, but I will say this, it is the best short stroke piston system I've used, period. And uh, I'm sure there's other stuff out there that's just as good. I haven't personally touched it. I haven't personally put 2,000 rounds through it. So I'm very happy with the Bren 2. Um, I originally had some interaction. I had some students with, come through a rifle class shooting the original Bren, the 805. And I was kind of like, eh, it exists. Uh, but the Bren 2 definitely got my attention, and I'm very happy with the performance. So if you're curious about it, uh, if, if you're thinking about buying one, I'd say just go ahead and get it. It's a really good gun. I'm Eric Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.